Speaking of defense, uh, I feel like here at Chat Sports, we always give a lot of credit to some of the best, you know, college football players on our Heisman, Heisman watch list, list which typically ah. speaking is usually offensive it's players. The best offensive player in the country. But we here at Chat Sports want to take a look at actually some of the best defensive player of the year candidates. And we're going to start you guys off with Ed Oliver, the defensive end out of Houston. Yeah, he's been pretty spectacular this year and just in general. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's, the guy's a true sophomore. Last year as a freshman, he was, he was a true freshman All-American. So he was fantastic last year, 22 tackles for loss to go along with nine sacks. This year, currently sitting on three sacks and only nine tackles for loss. He's had some injury issues, but this guy, without a question, when he comes out of the draft, is going to mm -hmm. be a top five pick. He's a spectacular force on that Houston defensive line. He would, you know, th th this is a really special kid and a special player. High football IQ, high motor. He has been one of my favorite players to watch in college football, and I have the perfect NFL comp for him. Because That's what is, I was just going to ask you. you read th my mind. This is, this is, he is Geno Atkins. He is Geno okay. Atkins. They are like an that. unbelievably similar, like both play style, size, fo high football IQ. Uh, Geno Atkins didn't have the, what's the word I'm looking for, the persona coming mm. out of college like Ed Oliver did. Obviously, Geno Atkins was a third-round pick. Ed Oliver's probably going to be a top 10, top 15 pick, if not top 5 next year, depending on how his junior season goes. Mm -hmm. But they are very, very similar styles of player. They, that inside pass rush, that inside quickness, being able to beat an offensive lineman inside of a phone booth. So I think Ed Oliver's going to have a very, very healthy college career. But this year took a slight step back, but still a fantastic player. Also worth mentioning that Oliver uh, started his season with back-to-back -back games that had forced fumbles. So, yeah. I mean, turning the ball over, you can't ask for more out of a defensive end. Let's move on to their fourth guy on the list. We've got Ogbu Okoronku. Did I do that good? Oh, Ogbu Okoronku. <laughs> there we go. There you Linebacker go. out of Oklahoma. The dude is an absolute stud. He's the senior outside linebacker. He's probably the best player that they have. He is the best he player is. that they have on that defense. It's, it's kind of it's not really saying, you know, you can say, oh, well, how much is that saying? Oklahoma's defense is not very good, but he is. He is the difference maker on the defensive side of the ball. He can rush the passer and drop into his zone coverage. He's a fantastic player. You know who he honestly reminds me of? He that? reminds me of an early in his career Thomas Davis. Not so much mm -hmm. anymore. They've, they've stopped having Thomas Davis rush the passer as much because he's lost a little bit of his speed, but... Early in his career, Thomas Davis was a fantastic all-around linebacker. He could cover the middle of the field. He could rush the passer off the edge. A little Donta Hightower to him as well from the New England Patriots. I think of course, um, you make a Patriots reference. Uh, you know, it, it, but at Homer. the same time, I mean, you know, just just look at the the actual NFL comps that you'll see from him. They're very similar players. I'd like to see Ogbo get a little bit bigger in terms of his overall body size. I think he has a bigger frame, and I think he has room to grow. I think once you get him into an NFL weight room, he's going to explode. I think he'll end up being more of a pass rusher than he will end up being a middle linebacker. So, so here's another name for people. Leonard Floyd, the guy that uh, that the Chicago Bears got from Georgia a couple years ago. That's kind of who I see with, uh, with Ogbo being very similar to. So they move Leonard Floyd to much more of a pass rusher set than a uh, mid inside linebacker. And before so, we move to yeah. number three, I do want to mention only one game for Ogbo this year. Ogbo this year. Ogbo. Ogbo, Ogbo, Lena, Ogbo, where he didn't have a sack. Yeah, there you and go. And that's, I that mean. That's the pass rushing efficiency exactly. you're looking for. I think that's what he'll be in the NFL. All right, guys, let's take a look at number three on our list. And this is Mo Hurst out of Michigan, defensive tackle. This kid's a beast. This, this dude's a monster. He's one. Of, he's easily the best run-stopping D tackle that we have in college. Pro Football Focus thinks that he's been the best player in college football you know, far and away, at least on the defensive side of the ball. And actually, I have his NFL comp being a former Michigan Wolverine. He is Alan Branch. There's just That's just who he is. If you remember Alan Branch early in his career when he was with the Buffalo Bills, he actually was a pretty fantastic pass rusher as well. I think, I think Mo Hurst is going to have a little bit more uh, d difficulty in the NFL being a legitimate pass rusher, but he should come in and be an instant game changer on the defensive side of the ball in the run game. He is an absolute stud against the run. He takes on double teams almost every single time around. I think, you again, you get him into an NFL weight room, and that strength is going to match up inside of the NFL. He's going to be a fantastic interior lineman for whoever uh, for whoever ends up picking him up. But I think, you know, and, and you know, they did just draft Jordan Lewis last year. I think Mo Hurst would be a perfect Dallas Cowboy. They need a run stuffer so badly. I think he'd be a perfect fit well, on that defense. Well, Ward, he's 6'2", 280. He's huge. He's, Size and, matters. And, and I think he's only going to get bigger. Just, just remember, Damon Harrison, when he first came out of college, a uh, guy now on the Giants, Snacks, mm -hmm. was 
not as big as he is now. He got bigger, and as he got bigger, he got better. Now, arguably the best run-stopping defensive tackle in all of college football, in all of uh, the NFL, excuse me. So I think that's Moher's career path, and I think that's who will be in the NFL. All right, we're going to take you to number two on our list, another defensive lineman, Bradley Chubb, coming out of NC State. Yeah, Bradley Chubb right now uh, tied for second in all of college football in sacks. He does lead uh, the FBS in tackles for loss. He has been an absolute stud this year. He is doing what I thought Harold Landry was going to do mm -hmm. for Boston College this year. That's who Bradley Chubb has been. He's spectacular. He's a great force off the edge. He doesn't have the same, what's the word I'm looking for, electricity that Miles Garrett had last year coming out of college, but the body types are similar. Just that very prototypical DN body type. He reminds 6'4", 275. Yeah, he's massive. He also reminds me of Cliff Averill, who unfortunately is out for the season this year for the Seahawks. A very good NFL comp for him, like as Cliff Averill is the guy, can speed rush, rush you off the edge. He can also have some power moves as well. Uh, that 6'4 body frame that he has, he isn't as large in terms of swatting down passes as we've seen from uh, a couple of other DNs coming to college mm -hmm. the past couple of years, but for the most part, he should be a pretty spectacular player in the NFL. Coming off the edge, I think a great place for him would be opposite of uh, either Carlos Dunlap or Carl Lawson, depending on what happens on the Bengals defense. I think that would be a good spot for him as well. But any team that needs a pure pass rusher and also someone that can stop the run, Bradley Chubb's your guy. Well, and he's got length too. He's had three passes deflected mm -hmm. on the season so far. So he's swatting he, balls he's, down. he's fantastic. And he's really eaten up the ACC. Mm -hmm. And he's really been one of the big reasons why that NC State defense has been one of the tops in the ACC this year. All right, guys, let's take you to number one on our list. And it is the cornerback coming out of Alabama, Minka Fitzpatrick. The best defensive back in college football this year. I and thought down. we'd be talking about Derwin James here, but we're not because that Florida State team in general has just not been, they've been bad. So Mika Fitzpatrick as a whole, I think is a perfect combination of an outside corner that you're looking for. One thing that I love to see out of my corners coming out of college, do they have a willingness to tackle and do they have a willingness to stop the run? He does both of that to a pretty spectacular fashion. He is an outstanding run stopping cornerback. He loves to blitz off the edge. He's a great tackler as well. I think that he can also cover people deep down the field. I'm a little worried about his straight line speed coming out of college. We'll see what he ends up being. I think Marlon Humphrey, the, the Alabama corner who got drafted from Baltimore uh, to Baltimore last year, is a similar guy, but I think Megan Fitzpatrick's even better than him in terms of being able to cover people on the outside. So he's somewhere in between Marlon Humphrey and Jalen Ramsey. But I, I think he's going to end up being one of the better run-stopping cornerbacks that we have in uh, the NFL when he gets drafted. All right, we'll take you guys through the recap here. Number five, Ed Oliver. Number four, Ogbu. Um, number three, Maurice Hurst. Number two, Bradley Chubb. And number one, Minka Fitzpatrick Harris. So I know we, we do have – oh. Okay, who gets drafted a little early? Who gets drafted first? So, we had a lot of seniors first. and juniors on that list. So out of that list, who's eligible to go in the draft uh -huh. this year? I think, it, I think it's going to be Bradley Chubb. I think Bradley Chubb is probably going to end up being one. I think he's going to be drafted in the first 10 picks. Mm -hmm. Because, again, like I said, I mentioned Harold Landry, the DN out of Boston College. You honestly should have come out last year as probably the second best premier pass rusher in the draft behind Miles Garrett, maybe tied with Derek Barnett. But... I think that this year it has to be Bradley Chubb, mm -hmm. uh, at least that we have on that list. He's going to be a premier pass rusher in the NFL. Another guy he reminds me a lot of is Everson Griffin, maybe a little bit smaller. Everson Griffin is just a massive, massive man. But I, I think Bradley Chubb has that kind of potential. He's going to be a fantastic pass rusher. He's going to be a double-digit sack guy in the NFL. And also, not to mention, his football IQ is off the charts. He's a big-time leader for that want. NC State team. I know he had that weird spitting on the logo incident with Florida State. Whatever. It, you know, it's ACC football. Let him have some fun. I, I, I really do think that Bradley Chubb's a fantastic player.